Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is for the new moon in Scorpio happening on November 18th at 542 Central Standard Time. So if you're in Europe, this will be in the early afternoon, I would imagine, for you guys. And um, this is going to be a discussion of the astrological transits as well as me picking a few cards to see what kind of energy comes up through the cards. I do want to say something though. I did a video on Jupiter going into Scorpio and you can find that on my channel. I think I posted it about a month ago or so. And I'm telling you guys it's already happening and of course, I live in the United States, so I can only talk about my own universe here. But all of these scandals, and a lot of them are sexual, and Scorpio deals with sex. I was talking about that, how Jupiter blows things up. It kind of expands things. And we're seeing this being unveiled. All of these people, some of them acting like they are above it all and really um, what is underneath the surface. Scorpio is all about, you know, what lies beneath the surface, especially when it's kind of icky or, you know, not very pleasant because Pluto is one of the rulers of Scorpio as well as Mars. And Pluto is all about regeneration, but Think about when something needs to be healed. First, it's like this oozing uh, wound or festering wound, and it needs to be disinfected, you know. And so, sunlight is the best disinfectant. And I maybe I'll maybe I'll call um, this video that because I feel like there's a cleansing going on, and it feels really interesting because I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm recording this on November 9th, and so the new moon is nine days from now, and usually we're, when we talk about things being revealed, we're talking about full moon cycles, but because of the nature of Scorpio and the, the intense Scorpio influence that's going to be happening during this new moon, it's going to really be emphasized and magnified. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about a few of the transits and I'm also going to read from Jan Spiller's book about her list of new moon intentions that you can do for Scorpio. In terms of the, the transits, just to kind of review for some people that may not be aware, a new moon is when the sun and moon are in conjunction. So on this date, the sun and moon are going to be in um, at 26 degrees of Scorpio. And I was going to look up th what the number 26 represents in and of itself because that has been a very, uh, that's been a recurring number. And if you look at it numer numerologically, um, 2 plus 6 equals 8, and actually Scorpio is the 8th house. So there is an 8, eight vibration in there, and that would have to do with power and all of those things. I don't know if Pluto actually rules that number, but definitely it's a number like I know I have it with my numerology, and it has to do with wealth. Um, I do sense that this is a very good time for um, attracting material wealth to you. I feel that way very strongly because Scorpio, and I would say this about all of the water signs, but I feel this especially with Scorpio, it's a very fertile sign. Like if you are somebody who has a sun in Scorpio, I, I'm going to say a woman um, or a moon in Scorpio, you have to 
um, really watch out because you may, it, it may be very easy for you to get pregnant. And, but this is really good because the new moon is a period of time where you can almost say it's like this pregnancy. And, okay, let me see. Like, for instance, there is a conjunction between Venus and Jupiter at the time of this new moon. And that is really good because these are two planets that can be associated with wealth or, or money. We'll just say money. And likewise, there is a trine between Jupiter and Neptune. And so that means that if we, if we look at Neptune as being this mystical force that everything flows to very easily um, with Jupiter because of the trine, um, there's an easy flowing energy. We're looking at the expansion that Jupiter represents and it being in conjunction with Venus and the fact that it's um, flowing easily with Neptune, which is, is kind of like your visualization the, in terms of like you connecting spiritually with your intentions of what you want and just manifesting very easily. And so likewise, Venus is trining Neptune. So it's just very, very good for planting seeds of intention. Let's put it that way. There's a conjunction also between Mercury and Saturn. So that can be very good for incredible concentration. You know, if you're trying to really make something happen, that can make your mind cooperate with your goal. And again, with visualization, uh, Saturn can bring something down to the physical dimension. And, um, uh, you know, I, I was reading this book. I wish I could find it so I could actually read what it said. But basically, it was talking about how manifestation actually starts with thought and it's what's so coming from the upper chakras. And then it's coming down to the lower chakras for the 3D manifestation. So people tend to become simplistic about spirituality. And they say, oh, well, the first three chakras are the lower chakras. So they are inferior to the upper chakras, which are very mystical and spiritual, higher uh, vibration or whatever they, they, they call it. And the thing is that you have to have both because we're here in this 3D dimension for a reason. And if you're the kind of person that's like, oh, the material, the material is inferior to the spiritual, well, you know, good luck with that. That's cool. But you're still in this world. You don't have to be of this world, but you're in this world. And so... My thing is, how can I manifest materially and not get sucked into the minutia of it or the low vibration of it? Because I know that I'm here for a reason. I don't think that I'm here to like deny everything material because what would be the point of being here then? Um, to just give me like these cruel tests over and over again. I just don't, I don't buy that. So... If you're somebody who wants to manifest things, this may be like one of the best times to do so. And um, the other thing too that I think is very important is that Saturn will be at 26 degrees of Sagittarius at this time. And the galactic center is 27 degrees. And I was watching this wonderful video by Lada, and you probably, a lot of you probably know Lada if you follow astrologers on YouTube, and she was talking about the Galactic Center and about, I, I you know, I don't know much about it, but um, I believe it's like my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, if anyone has more knowledge about, about this, is that it's kind of like the womb of the material world. And um, so it's where everything is birthed. 
And um, so it's kind of like zero point or something where we're going back to, it's like erasing our karma and we can be conscious co-creators from a completely new um, place. And um, if, I, I mean, I don't know if I even got that correctly, correct? But if we just look at it in terms of Saturn as this discipline, this, I was going to say disciplinarian, but I don't like that word. But this force that, that makes us disciplined and organized and brings things into the material level. And then the galactic, galactic center as the womb and this new moon as this very fertile period of time, I think that we can really, you know, if not instantly manifest, at least manifest at an accelerated pace. Perhaps in that two-week window, when um, there's actually going to be an exact conjunction of Saturn with the galactic center at 27 degrees of Sagittarius, I believe that's from the 25th of November until like the early maybe until the full, full moon in uh, Gemini on uh, December 3rd, around that time. So that's looking at a window of about 10 days. And then you factor in this um, new moon, and you're looking at an additional week. So that's around the, two, the, the, the new moon cycle, the two-week cycle until the, the full moon. So I think there might be something conspiring on our behalf, you guys. And I definitely would um, take advantage of that. With, um, with the Sun and Moon and, and these other planets, Venus and Jupiter, being in Scorpio, and the fact I saw something, let me look at my aspects table here again. I saw something, yeah, there's um, a trine between Mercury and, and Uranus, as well as that conjunction that I spoke of with Mercury and and uh, Saturn. The thing about it is that Uranus and Aries um, trining Mercury, that Uranus is, is known for being psychic. So this can really enhance your psychic abilities because Scorpio is very intuitive as well. And then you have these other planets in Scorpio too. So a lot of water, but um, also a lot of intensity being that Scorpio is the water sign that is involved here. But um, so that's beautiful. And um, now let me look up um, Jane Spiller's New Moon Intentions. I'm sure that they're going to have something to do with purification and, uh, you know, just purging, letting go of what no longer serves you because the eighth house is all about transformation. And um, I really like that idea of the galactic center. Okay. Empowerment, change, crisis skills, Self-mastery, sex and soulmates, financial partnerships, avoiding power struggles. Oh, and by the way, in terms of these scandals that are emerging, some of them involve other people's money, involve uh, political contributions that were used to, I, I'm j I'll just put it out there in kind of a veiled way, using political contributions to create a false narrative, pay people in a foreign government um, money to lie about somebody else for political gain. Okay, um, so that, and then to act like that other person is the one that is engaging in the things that you're actually engaging in. But the sex the sex scandals, but in this case, too, is about, you know, we're being forced to, to look at the issue of sex 
And with um, the scandals in Hollywood, and also, you know, that will probably reverberate with um, even political um, figures, that the, the, the issue is one of power. A lot of people get hung up on the sex, and they forget about the power issue. Because people say, why do people do things like that? Why would somebody just... Um, why would they, somebody just expose themselves? Why would they do that? Um, and people do things because they can or because they want to test the other person to see if their power is really intact the way they think it is. But the thing that has to be mentioned is that real power comes from within you um, in terms of your own how you comport yourself. When you are uh, violating somebody else in any way, even putting them in that position, you're at a very weak point because you're relying on their behavior, whether it's fear on their part, you're generating fear on their part, um, whatever emotion gets generated. It's not power it's it's control and it relies on an outer force it's not coming from within and while you're doing that to somebody else you are being degraded some people think that they can degrade other people and that they will somehow elevate themselves and it just doesn't work that way whether it's doing something um, saying something mean to somebody or to actual actually doing something that violates somebody else's personal power. Um, no, it doesn't work that way. And um, I think the judgment card in the Tarot relates to karma. I mean to Pluto and therefore to karma. And definitely uh, Pluto is a karmic planet. So, But all of these issues can be things that you... Um, reflect upon and want to get straight with and maybe attract it in a, in a positive way in your life. Um, other things that she mentions is, oh, it's funny. <laughs> Check this out. She says that Scorpio rules power, including secrets, <laughs> awareness of others' needs and motives, politics, psychology and charisma now and she says she, um, she mentions um, you know possible wishes that you might have and these would be like intentions about keeping secrets more easily heightened awareness and seeing the needs the real needs of your your significant other and um, using power constructively And it, Scorpio also, she says it also rules transcendence, so this would include transformation, eliminating old baggage, change, restoration, and forgiveness. And with Scorpio, if you're somebody who is an actual Scorpio, sun, moon, or maybe Venus or Mars, and oh, definitely Mercury too, because that's the way that you think, you may struggle with issues surrounding forgiveness because... Um, I think especially with Mars being one of the rulers, there's that sense of vengeance, you know, that warrior energy that sometimes the, the shadow side of Scorpio comes up and uh, is all about. And you have to be able to transcend that and not fall into that trap of thinking that that is um, going to bring you happiness. Um, they say Scorpio rules crisis, including taking risks to gain power, compulsions, obsessions, intense interactions, living on the edge. And again, I mean, I have been watching these videos. Now you could call them conspiracy videos, but, um, and I have the sun in the eighth house. So, and the moon in conjunction with Pluto. So that's like having the moon in, in Scorpio and the sun in Scorpio with um, 
having it in the eighth house. And um, I love that kind of stuff because I feel like when secrets come out like this, that it purges, you know, all of these toxins that are kind of bubbling beneath the surface and that it ultimately leads to something um, of improved circumstance in our lives. And so I, I think that in the short term, it can be very, like they say, living on the edge. And it's like just seeing all of these things coming into the light right now is that Jupiter and Scorpio just kind of like on steroids with the exposure of scandals. And it's showing that, you know, nobody is above the law, that even people at the very top, um, you know, have to face cause and effect in this universe, because this is a universe that where that applies. What you sow, you shall reap, so shall you reap. And one of the lower aspects of Scorpio is wanting revenge. I was going to say, I don't want revenge, but I am not a Scorpio. I was saying I have those influences. I want people to become enlightened and to learn why they are in darkness if they are doing things like that. I don't want people to suffer, but I want them to learn that they're on the wrong path. And so that's where I'm at with all of this. Now, um, in terms of soulmates, I think that's very interesting that she, that Jan Spiller mentions this um, for the eighth house, I'm assuming, or connected to Scorpio, because um, I typically think of the twelfth house with Pisces, but um, it, it is the house of deep intimacy. So the seventh house is the house of marriage, and that's almost like the surface, the, the wedding ring, the, you know, the, the, you know, the title of Mr. or Mrs. and not really the actual deep connection there. And so what do you have? What type of relationship do you have with your partner? And is it what you want it to be? Yeah, and this is the shadow aspects. Um, she says, Scorpio also rules the misuse of power, including revenge, jealousy, harsh judgments, destructive urges, power struggles, abandonment, suspicion, and guilt. And again, if you have a prominent planet in Scorpio, you can tend to have those um, as shadow issues. Not, I'm not saying that all Scorpio people would have those, but that is a common theme where a Scorpio person feels very suspicious of others because they have abandonment issues. And that might be something that you need to look at at the time of the new moon and make these um, intentions for um, freeing yourself of that emotional baggage because you can usually trace it to some... If you, if you fear abandonment now, you probably were abandoned before and usually starting in childhood. Or who knows, maybe even a past life that you still have that. So let me pick a card from my Rider Waite tarot deck. And then I'll pick one from the um, Crystal tarot deck for the shadow work to be done. So this will be kind of the, the Morgan Girl will be the light because it's kind of a bright card. And just say the, the positive. <laughs> oh, God. The positive manifestation, the Ten of Swords. Oh boy, that's really rich, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. Well, that's your scorpionic humor for you. And then we're going to... So that's the positive spin on things. And then here's the shadow work. The Queen of Pentacles. Well, this is a card of a lot of blessings. Okay. Well, I can already tell you what I think. What the heck? is that all about? And then I'm going to pick one from my 
Keepers of the Light Oracle deck, and they'll have some kind of a Ascended Master here. Lady Venus. Interesting. And Venus is in, is in Scorpio, too. Downloads and understanding. Truth is being revealed. Deep insights are coming from heaven and the astral uh, realm. And uh, by the way, I just wanted to say, too, that with Jupiter... Jupiter rules the sign of Sagittarius, which deals with truth. So we're seeing truth, and we're seeing Scorpio can be the secretive uh, thing. So truth being revealed and cleansing through truth, okay? So let's take this um, card of the Ten of Swords. And I said this is the, the positive side. Well, we can say the worst is over. Um, maybe at this time, a lot will have happened in the nine days from when I record this, that there's going to be a lot of purging in our society in some way, and that we will be in a better place by the time of the new moon. That would be wonderful. Um, actually, even though there's a lot of intrigue going on right now, I, I, it's so strange, but I feel lighter than I did at the time during um, Libra, when it was actually... Um, this air sign that is supposed to be more, you know, be less intense as Scorpio and things like that. And I actually felt it, it was more intense then. So I don't know what that's all about. But um, maybe it's because things are starting to shift. And in your own personal life, think about, you know, when they say, you know, stop the bleeding. Um, the, Ten of, the Ten of Swords deals with betrayal. And for those people who have experienced betrayal, the worst is over, and you are healing. Now you may feel like you don't you you may feel like you're not healing quickly enough, but you have to be willing to also forgive. And that doesn't mean forget, and it doesn't mean um, excuse bad behavior on another person's part. Um, I've just been I've just finished a series of love readings uh, for troubled relationships. And one of the things I said was, sometimes you forgive somebody and you leave the relationship. It's not that you have to stay, but when people hold on to bitterness, bitter feelings, it's usually because they somehow feel that what happened was um, some kind of indictment against them. And it's not. It's that other person's issue. If they betrayed you in some way. They were going through something in their life that they felt they had to do that. Doesn't make it right, but you shouldn't feel badly about yourself because of what they did. And that could, you know, hold you back, keep you in that space. The shadow work to do is the Queen of Pentacles, and this card connects with issues surrounding your own um, sense of abundance. And as I said, at this time, there's going to be a lot of um, possibilities for manifestation. But part of that is whether or not you feel deserving of it. It's so important to feel deserving of um, the things in order to not push it away. And so... Just keep that in mind as you navigate this period of time and ask yourself, um, you know, do I feel worthy of attracting material good to me? And then the last card is Lady Venus. Downloads and understanding. And I, and I had already read this. I'll read it again. Truth is being revealed. Deep insights are coming from heaven and the astral realm. And I'm going to just read from the booklet exactly what this means. I, I just love, I, I feel like this uh, reading is really flowing and, um, and kind of organic. Um, I've been looking forward to doing it because of all the things that have been going on. It says, Lady Venus is the twin flame of Sanat Kumara and is said to reside on the astral realm surrounding the planet Venus. The light beings of Venus, known as Venusians, are now coming to light workers on Earth to help them with their connections, understanding, and 
understanding and capacity to share love, divine love. Lady Venus is a wonderful keeper of the light to call on you when you are trying to forge a connection with the heavens or finding it difficult to understand the signs, symbols, and guidance that are being sent to you physically or through meditation. She also allows us to connect with or focus on particular energies so we can understand them more. If you are studying a spiritual subject at this time, call on Lady Venus to help you. And then um, they give an extended message which says, Hearing high-pitched noises, seeing flickers of light, and having a sense that beings are visiting you in your sleep are all signs that you're receiving downloads from heaven. Whenever this is happening, spend some time in contemplation so that you can ask the universe what you really need to know. This card also represents downloads of information being received by your mind. Know that the universe sees you as capable of holding soul-centered information that will help you and others reach a new level of understanding. So I just, um, I think that's wonderful because with that, the trine um, from uh, Mercury to Uranus, that could be an example of the downloads um, and also Jupiter and well, that specifically, but the beautiful angles between Venus and um, Neptune for instance, and Jupiter and Neptune. So I'm looking forward to this new moon, um, possibly more than uh, most this year, you guys, and I hope that you are too. Thank you for watching and take care of yourselves. Bye.